Assalamu alaikum. This is Muhammad Qureshi for the Real Agenda on UCTV. Today I'm going to bring you a short video, around 10 minutes, uh, from a brother. I requested this brother to uh, make a video, make a video and uh, go through uh, what he had experience basically uh, because he's um, just recovering from the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus okay so uh, we're going to show you his video and uh, like I said I've told him to run that virus uh, mm -hmm. obviously we're in lockdown at the moment uh, we're only allowed out for certain things like going for a walk which I'm doing now uh, and otherwise we try and keep indoors and stay home so he's staying home at the moment but we've got him to do this video for us and inshallah just hear from him and see what uh, he says regarding his experience uh, with the symptoms of the coronavirus inshallah so over to brother Ben Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Just wanted to make a video on the coronavirus and some of its symptoms, which uh, I've had for uh, the past three weeks now. And although I was never officially diagnosed with it, um, when I called the NHS 111 number, um, they advised me that um, you should only go into hospital and get official diagnosis if the symptoms get worse. With my case, I just had some of the minor symptoms, but it was enough to basically knock you out. <laughs> and um, for those people out there who want just maybe a guide on what some of it feels like and some of the symptoms so you can choose to self-isolate. My biggest mistake at the beginning was I had some of the symptoms and I was around family members who are vulnerable and I ignored it at the time until the symptoms started worsening. So, inshallah, if you have any of the symptoms, then um, please choose to self-isolate and distance yourself because you can't take any risks with this at the moment. And so it started about three weeks ago um, when I travelled down to the south of England where I work and I travelled down via London. This is when it started uh, outbreaking initially. And... Because I was on sets of trains, um, I was quite careful to wash my hands through every platform I went on and every train I went on as well. Um, I was careful to wash my hands at uh, every stop of my journey, which was a long journey. The symptoms, uh, as I read online, they don't start to show for a good 7 to 14 days. So after about a week, uh, the symptoms started to show, which consisted of um, tightness of the chest and heavy breathing and you feel like you're basically you've, you've got like a piece of glass stuck in your chest and it would feel like there's a lot of pressure and it would feel very tight and I remember my mum seeing me and she said um, your eyes are very bloodshot and I didn't really think anything of it at the time and I noticed the more I was kind of walking just casually you know around town uh, visiting my grandparents I noticed I was becoming more and more out of breath, but didn't really think anything of it. And a few days in more after that, the tightness of the chest started coming on. It felt very tight in your chest and you feel kind of a bit of pressure. And then when I came back up uh, north, all the lockdowns started happening. And I think it was the very next day, um, I was extremely lethargic. And I've never felt lethargic like that before. Um, even after traveling long distances, which I do for work, I never feel this kind of lethargy. And it's like your entire body just wants to shut down, just completely shut down. And you feel extremely tired and breathless. And you feel a lot of pressure in your chest and it feels what only I can describe as someone has tied a ton of bricks to your head. And it just makes you want to look down, your eyes just want to look down. It feels like someone's put cling film over your eyes. Um, but I kind of wrote it off and thought nothing of it because I thought maybe it was just due to traveling. Um, but as I was walking back from town, I noticed my breathing had become very short and sharp and I could only inhale and exhale 
very short, sharp breaths. And it, it sounded like this, like, <gasps> like that. And that's as much as you can breathe in and out. And the, when you breathe in, it feels like someone has stuck what I could describe as like a piece of glass or a razor blade in your chest and in your throat. And when you exhale, you can only exhale like this, like, <sighs> and when you breathe in, it's like, <gasps> and you can't breathe in a full breath. When you try and breathe in a full breath, like, <gasps> like that, it's like someone has put their hand against like your windpipe. Um, so I started feeling a lot more heavy headed and only I could describe as felt like a ton of bricks have been tied to my head. Um, the breathing was very short and sharp. I kept having to take stops when I was walking home um, to catch my breath. And eventually I made the initiative when I got home to ring the NHS 111 number. And I told them about some of the symptoms and I made them listen to my breathing down the phone. And they said, yeah, these are some of the minor symptoms. And I said, do I need to call 999 or anything? And they said, at the moment, because of the capacity of the hospitals, don't call 999 unless your um, your symptoms get worse, in which case you do need to call 999. So I waited a few days and it gradually did get worse for, for a few days. And the, the, the dry coughing came on as well. And when you cough, you know, normally you'd have like a it would be phlegmy or you'd feel kind of tickly at the back of your throat. This is very sharp. It's a sharp cough and it, it will hurt your chest and it will feel like every time you cough, someone is sticking like maybe a twig down your throat and it's very, it's very dry. It's very dry. And it's, it's very sharp. Um, and the coughing came on and the, the breathing was very heavy and it feels like whenever you're talking and whenever you talk to somebody, it feels every word you say, it feels like a, a push up. It feels like someone's doing, you know, push standing on your back doing push ups with you. <laughs> and you can't say literally more than three or four words without getting breathless. Um, and the breathing does get sharper and shorter. Um, but alhamdulillah, after two days, um, the symptoms did start clearing up, um, although I still felt extremely lethargic and what I could only describe as during them two days is it's like being in a bubble and someone has turned down all of the oxygen levels. So all of the oxygen levels have been turned down and you're in a bubble uh, that someone has literally switched off all the oxygen. That's what it feels like. It feels like there's just no air around you. And it's just constant pressure and constant kind of like difficulty breathing all around you. It's been locked in a room that's got no air ventilation in. That's what it feels like. But it's just all around you uh, with a brick tied to your head. And all your body wants to do is just shut down and sleep. And you've just got to be patient with the breathing. Alhamdulillah, mine did get better. Although I'm... Th three weeks into it now I've done my seven day isolation this is my third week now I'm still feeling the pressure in my chest the tightness and I still get out of breath quite easily but compared to what it was I, <laughs> the first few days I couldn't even talk literally could could not even talk and so uh, the, they did advise me on the NHS 111 number that if they if it did get worse you have to call uh, 999 but because of capacities in hospital at the moment, um, they don't really want to bring people in with minor symptoms for testing because they need to save that for people who, who have got worse symptoms. So alhamdulillah, uh, for what I can describe is it definitely most likely was the coronavirus from the symptoms. Um, speaking to other brothers who did have it confirmed in London, people who sent me WhatsApp messages and um audio clips and reading from uh, online as well people who have had the minor symptoms described exactly what I had exactly the same way um, the only best advice I can give at that point um, is that you just keep drinking loads and loads and loads of fluids orange juice really helped me um, I was very lucky that um, a brother who I know sent up food for me in a taxi and if anyone in the communities can do that for each other um, that would be good, you know, you really look after each other because that I would have really struggled um, to get any shopping done or 
get any food for my house um, if, if he didn't do that. So if anyone is finding themselves with these symptoms or what I've described, the best thing to do at this point is self-isolate. And as we've seen how's it, how it's got gradually worse and worse, um, it's just no reason, you know, you just can't take any chances with it. You know, it, it may be okay for someone like me, um, but you just don't know. You could go down to Morrison's and pick up a tin of beans or something and someone who, you know, could pick it up after you who's got um, medical conditions, you know, they could catch it off you just as easily like that. And like I said before, I was really careful to wash my hands on my journey. So I definitely think I caught it from lack of social distancing, sitting next to people on a train or on the London Underground who who, who may have had this, who may have had the virus and I've caught it off them. So in this situation, it's best to look out for each other. Um, if you know anyone, like single mums, there's a lot of single mums out there who can't go out shopping. Um, you know, please look out for people, offer help. And if anyone's got access to cars or if they're lucky enough to have a family to cook at home, make food for people, bring it round. Um, and inshallah, we'll all stick together through this because the virus isn't going to, you know, it ain't going to differentiate who you are or what religion you are or what colour you are. It's going to attack you. So inshallah, stay together, be a community and hopefully inshallah, everything, you know, will pass within a few months. We'll get over this together. So that was Brother Ben talking about his experience uh, with the coronavirus and what he's been going through. Uh, so this just goes to show you know, there are people experiencing uh, the symptoms. Uh, and just to be aware of, uh, of how things are when somebody gets that, especially for those of you who have not experienced any symptoms so far. Inshallah you won't experience any, but in case you do, you know, that's a perspective from someone who's actually had the coronavirus. Now I know a lot of you have been inquiring about uh, what is the coronavirus? Is it real? You know, uh, do, and if it is real, is the government telling us uh, everything there is to know about the coronavirus? Are they being entirely honest with us? Are there certain things being kept hidden from us? Hmm? So, with that in mind, uh, and with the lockdown going ahead, there's going to be a special uh, edition, so maybe a few, uh, of the, the Real Agenda. Uh, and these will be the Real Agenda documentaries. So, we will be uh, putting together some footage, some research on different things. I don't know, there's a lot of things out there. We'll try and make it as factual as possible. We'll try and make it as factual as possible. We'll try and get the figures and statistics, uh, you know, to, to support uh, any findings we come across uh, with those other agendas. Um, I won't, I won't, I'll be honest with you, we'll probably go into uh, alter alternative views on what's going on, in, whether it's the coronavirus or anything else. Um, but we'll try and support it with whatever facts they are. Um, not just what you hear in the mainstream uh, and take it from there so look look out for the real agenda documentaries uh, and the first one inshallah I'm putting myself on the spot there because I'm going to be doing a lot of research uh, will be uh, will be called COVID 2020 and look out for that we're putting that together shortly uh, and releasing it on UCTV and we'll look into other things as well not just this topic uh, but we'll definitely start with this topic because this is hot a hot topic right now uh, the whole world is going through it and yeah let's see how things will ask we'll, we'll get we'll dig into those uh, questions about what the actual facts are and what the politicians are saying uh, you know are, are we being told lies are they exaggerations is 5G responsible? We look into that too. Uh, there's a lot of things people are questioning now, uh, especially with you guys uh, self-isolating out right now. Most of you, you, this is the talk now, and you'll be hearing this going forward. I, I imagine, uh, as, as far as this uh, agenda is being pushed, 
Uh, so look out for that and uh, inshallah look forward to the, the next episode. Assalamu alaikum.